Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time of day you're going to be listening to this broadcast. I am going to be talking about be not being married but not a bride. I want to say that um, I'll be looking at some notes at, from time to time because I want to make sure that this uh, lesson and this message has clarity. It is uh, about a testimony and my journey and what that looks like. So one must understand that just because you got married doesn't necessarily mean that you were ever a bride uh, by biblical definition. I was married for 23 years. Uh, but I was never a bride. I need you to let that resonate. I pray that this testimony and my life lessons about being married, uh, getting divorced, will be used to set the captives free. Uh, the journey began on August 14th, 2012, the day that my best friend um, died of breast cancer. After getting uh, a phone call, uh, from her mother as she instructed me to meet her at the funeral home. It was at that exact moment that the ex decided that he no longer wanted to be married. Uh, this was the day when the spiritual act of uh, marriage ended and the exploration and the journey began for me. This testimony, this teaching is a slight glimpse uh, into the strategic path that God gently showed me how to properly receive his unconditional love. In spite of the physical and spiritual ramifications that people have to face when they go through a divorce, I had to also deal with the public uh, dissolvement of a business. Even though divorces can somewhat be uh, difficult, they're not always and necessarily uh, created equal. Yet, I know with uh, certainty that the act of adultery comes with a different kind of consequences that are attached to it. There was a physical act of adultery and a spiritual act of adultery, which we both violated. Sometimes spiritual sins aren't easily understood. People rarely know how to be admonished from them, yet both uh, 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 come with grave uh, and unforeseen uh, consequences. So before I uh, delve too far into this sensitive uh, topic, I want to stress that I am strictly teaching from my personal experience and not from a textbook theology. My journey has taken approximately six years to achieve spiritual restoration, and that in itself is an epiphany. Let's begin. I need you to buckle your seat. I need you to get ready uh, for this supernatural ride. Uh, may this testament uh, be given to God's unfailing love and his restoration and his redemption for those that are in the body of Christ. So grab you some coffee, grab you some tea, and a notebook, and here goes. Technically, what you need to understand is that when we got together as a couple, unbeknownst to me, he was still legally married. Who knew? I was barely out of high school at the time, and I was a bit naive and what people would consider to be wet behind the ears. I asked him directly, you know, you seem like a brother that's married to me. And uh, given that he was in another state and he was from another state, there was no way of me verifying the status of his relationship, which made it somewhat, um, put me in a situation where it made it somewhat vulnerable um, because we didn't grow up together. We didn't have any connections. We didn't have any of the same friends. Uh, he had moved from, like I said, another state. Uh, we, there were no associations. And uh, this was prior to our first encounter. As a backdrop, let me just go back a little bit further as a backdrop. <laughs> what you need to really understand is at the time that it took place, there were no cell phones, there were no social media platforms, no dating apps. 
uh, no kinds of ways in which you we connect socially to get an understanding of where people are. People at that time um, had landlines, uh, they had house phones, and people were walking around with pagers. And there were a few dinosaur uh, phone booths left. Um, so again, there was no way for me to know who this person was authentically without the discerning of spirits. He flat out at that time, we were young, he camouflaged and he just laughed and, and he never answered the question directly at all. Um, and that should have been a major red flag. Uh, as, as I think back, uh, uh, you know, it was something that made me go, ah, you know, and when something makes you go, ah, you keep telling yourself, ah, ah, but you know, I, I didn't take heed to that. I, I, I didn't push back. I let it, I let it slide. Uh, I kept going forward. So ladies, let's be transparent. If you know, and you have to ask a man, you know what? Mm, you seem like you're married or you seem like you're tied up with some stuff at any stage of the relationship, courtship. Um, uh, you definitely need to understand that that warrants uh, further investigation. Uh, there were several at several infractions that were made knowingly and unknowingly with both parties um, because um, even though uh, he did uh, eventually get a divorce because I'm sure some of you guys are wondering here's what you need to know that happened I had prior relations prior to his divorce and then I conceived the child before our marriage took place I need you to chew on that and, and chew on the cud and look at what I just said. Um, and for you younger folks, that just means to digest what I'm saying properly. It is extremely vital to heed, to take heed to that. And it's that information shouldn't be just looked at as frivolously or glossed over as if me having a, a married man's baby, being in a relationship is something that's not relevant, especially in the spirit realm. It was a big deal. Therefore, on the onset, this was foolishness. This was arrogance. This was ignorance. Uh, when we decided to say I do to each other, uh, those guidelines for us getting married were not even practical in nature. They could never be considered authorized nor even ordained by God. Um, it is what I consider illegal spiritual soul tie, uh, sealed by a faulty, misleading, uh, unreliable legal marriage that tied us to bondage on earth that needed to have some rescinding. I will provide clarity in what happened in part two of that message um, so that you can get an understanding of what happened um, in um, how I got set free uh, from that spiritual bondage. Uh, but moving forward, so instead of me running for the hills, Fleeing from the clutches, clutches of that egregious sin, I willingly engaged in an improper relationship that led to horrendous, and I mean horrendous, spiritual and financial bondage, which means the bottom line, people, I committed adultery. And here's what the Word of God says, and here's how it's stated. Go to 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 1 Corinthians, excuse me, chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, and I'm going to read it. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor people that covet, those drunken people, those revilers, revilers, those extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And here you need to know again, I'm guilty. I'm guilty as charged. And he's talking about me. But here's what you also have to understand. We were washed. We have been sanctified. We have been justified by the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God. And I just thank him at this moment that he has that redemptive power. So moving on, regardless, I didn't know at the time because I was young, what adultery really meant, let alone known the severe consequences that came with it. Please note that my ignorance and my arrogance didn't remove the consequences. It's similar to a child not knowing if he crosses the street 
uh, on a red light that there's a possibility that he could get hit by a car. Here's what we need to know strongly is that um, not knowing something, not knowing the rules doesn't prevent an accident from happening. Therefore, the lack of knowledge or understanding doesn't change the circumstances either. Here's a sidebar. I wrote a book, uh, The Root of All Evil is Financial Chaos, which detailed the physical consequences and experiences that I went through from violating that principle of being in a relationship that led to unnecessary chaos, unnecessary dilemmas. I created online courses to help you go through and navigate from preventing those spiritual bondages that led to those financial crises. This particular testimony today is in addition to the book, which discloses the natural uh, circumstances um, that I that I face. This message is solely about me experiencing the spiritual deliverance from generational curses, um, generational curses that were associated from being a part a participant of adultery. The moment that I began that intimate relationship and that ungodly soul tie, we became emotionally and spiritually bonded to each other in an unhealthy way. And due to ignorance, that adulterous spirit was attached to uh, our covenant marriage. Um, and I need you to hear me. The act of adultery caused spiritual suffering, uh, financial suffering uh, beyond, like I said before, beyond comp comprehension. And please note that this outcome was specific to our circumstances. And even though um, it was emotionally and spiritually uh, abusive, uh, there was this religiosity that came with this uh, divorce that uh, needed to uh, be uh, rescindable. The marriage vows were based on formality, um, note, that understanding at that time, I didn't even know what a covenant was. I didn't know how it should operate. Uh, the marriage took place out of more, out of convenience and compliance. The ceremony was at the justice of the peace. Uh, it was not done out of love. It was not done out of honor. The marriage was built on a, a weak foundation and the foundation had flaws. And there, uh, it, because that foundation had flaws, it was bound to fail. And what you need to know, you can never sustain a relationship beyond the foundation in which it was be built. Um, again, let me say that again. You can never sustain a relationship beyond the foundation that it was built. So if it's built on adultery, how far do you think it's going to go? If it's built on lies, if it's, if it's built on deceit, it's, if it's built on witchcraft and manipulation, how far will any relationship go, let alone a marriage? It's important to know at this juncture that people in my family weren't necessarily plagued by divorce. They weren't plagued by drug addiction or in concert, incarceration per se or having babies out of wedlock. But let me tell you, adultery, Lord have mercy, ran rapid, ran deep on both sides of my family bloodline. My father was conceived in adultery. His mother had him by a married man. My mother was also conceived in adultery. Her mother was married and had my mother by another man. I conceived my firstborn out of adultery. Anyone with a religious, self-righteous, Pharisee mindset needs to understand that the devil and his cohorts have been read their spiritual Miranda rights, which means don't come against the people in the body of Christ. The blood of Jesus has redeemed, it's redemptive, and he can rectify any sin and any transgression. And this process, but you have to know that there will be a process that you have to go through because of the, the decisions that you made and the consequences that come with that and working out your salvation. So therefore, what I'm going to tell you, look at my notes, um, again, that um, people, you have a right to remain silent, and anything that you say can be held against you. Um, I'm going to pause at this point, and uh, I'm going to allow you to take a breath and to just kind of 
go back and digest properly what I've already said and ask the Holy Spirit uh, at this time to just clarify with wisdom and to go back and just kind of test the spirits to make sure that they line up with the word of God. Um, and, uh, and that uh, we'll talk about in part two, how my deliverance, what did that look like and how did it take place? Again, go back, listen to it several times, uh, share it with someone that you think it might be pertinent and that might help uh, and how it can be benefit to the body of Christ. And here's what you need to know. It, my passion is to make sure that you don't go through unnecessary things, unnecessary calamity. Uh, again, um, allow the Holy Spirit to disminister. And um, I will uh, see you soon in part two. So take care. Stay tuned. And remember to never do business hungry. Be blessed.